WebAssembly on Kubernetes. This has been the talk of the town of KubeCon EU 2024. And there is this project called SpinCube that was launched at Wasamio that makes it easier to run WebAssembly workloads, aka the Spin apps, onto the Kubernetes clusters. So in this video, we'll be talking about SpinCube and how you can run it on Kubernetes. And we'll be trying out a couple of examples, one from scratch and one from their own examples. So before starting, make sure to subscribe to the channel and support. And let's dive right into SpinCube. So WebAssembly, aka WASM, which is a universal bytecode, which is a format, basically you write the code and you compile that code into a WASM binary that can run on any platform. Now, there are several features of WebAssembly, including the smaller binary size, instantaneous startup times, and its security sandboxing, all of which I have explained in the course that I and Rishit created. So make sure to check out the complete WebAssembly course. But all these features can be leveraged for Kubernetes as well. So for example, you have more secure sandboxing containers. Or containers do provide some level of isolation, but the WebAssembly workloads are denied by default. So if anything, any access is required, it has to be explicitly mentioned for any outbound networking, etc. Speed, since WebAssembly is already smaller, there is it, it has near native speed performance, so it is much more enhanced in performance. It takes less resources because it's already smaller in size. It scales out rapidly. So it's very effective for the serverless workloads that you run on Kubernetes. Now, when it comes to effective resource utilization, it adds to the sustainability efforts. It also adds to the better utilization of the resources inside the Kubernetes cluster. So how everything fits together. So there is spin. Now spin is basically, a, you can say a CLI that you download and it provides you a friendly DevX experience. For example, like you must have used Docker. So Docker gives you a very, you know, seamless experience of creating and deploying the Docker images. Similar to that, Spin is for WebAssembly. Like you can create the applications, you can deploy the applications, you can scaffold the application to be deployed onto Kubernetes, which we will be doing shortly. And then there is Spin Cube, which is the project that has been open for CNCF donation uh, for the CNCF Sandbox project. So SpinCube is a collection of projects. In this, you have the operator that gets installed onto the Kubernetes cluster, and then it listens to the Spin app's custom resource. As soon as you create a Spin and scaffold it to the Spin app, you will be able to deploy it onto the Kubernetes clusters, and internally, the operators will create the necessary Kubernetes objects onto the Kubernetes cluster. And hence, you will be able to deploy your WebAssembly workloads with ease on the Kubernetes cluster. Now, recently, Rancher Desktop also announced it supports that with the latest version, it has the experimental support where you have the spin shim. So how everything happens and how everything actually came into existence for running WebAssembly workloads on Kubernetes is using the runvasi shims. So you have containerd and then you have runvasi shims and then you have the runtimes that runs your workloads. And in this particular case, it is the Spin shim. And this is the Rancher desktop. So it is the Rancher desktop open source and you can download it for Apple Silicon, Intel, Windows and even on Linux. So I already have Rancher desktop installed and it's kubectl get nodes. So already the Kubernetes Rancher desktop 1.29.4 version is up and running. And then this is spin cube. So we'll do the entire flow. We'll create a new application, build it, We'll push it to our OCI registry. We'll scaffold it to create a spin app custom resource. We'll apply it, the spin app custom resource, and then spin operator will read it and it will create the necessary components onto the worker nodes. And then you must have the container D shim spin on that particular node and also the runtime class manager that does it. And then you need a runtime class as well. So you need the runtime class as well. Basically, how it was done before. So there is this project called kvasm.ss that lets you configure your node to make it run WebAssembly modules. And the runtime class manager is basically the successor to kvasm operator. So that work is being done, but currently the installation is being handled by kvasm. So let's get started and see how we can, you know, do everything from scratch, whatever was mentioned. So what we are going to do first is we are going to do spin new demo. 
and we'll choose HTTP Rust. And we'll give like for to simplify YouTube. CD demo, VISRC lib, hello from to simplify. This works. Now we do a spin build. So spin build is complete, but what command it actually ran is mentioned in the spin.toml file. So there is this file called spin.toml, which has the metadata for the application and then the components and inside the components, what are the allowed outbound hosts? So this is where you allow the capabilities and the command for the build is carbo, carbo build target wasm32 wasi and release. Now we do spin up. This is to run locally. So we can go to the new tab. And we can just do a curl, hello, and it says hello from Cube Simplify. So this works. What we are going to do next is kubectl get pods hyphen A. So we have these pods, and now we'll actually add the cluster components for SpinCube. One thing is there, like when you install Rancher Desktop. So this is Rancher Desktop, and when you go to the preferences, in the preferences, you can see in Container Engine, you have to have the WebAssembly enabled so that is something which is so, uh, you can do in the preferences section once this is done and you should be able to get up and running with spin now let's start the procedure for installing spin so we don't have to create the cluster uh, yeah we need to install cert manager so let's do that next step is the runtime class let's do that next step is the crds for the spin operator let's do that Next is the spin cube operator. And last is the shim executor. So now if we do kubectl get pause hyphen A, we should be seeing that cert manager which was there, which is fine, but we have the spin operator which is running that is responsible for checking off the custom resource of spin apps and deploying the required Kubernetes objects out of the Kubernetes cluster. So we have everything set up. So what first we'll do is we will push the application to the registry. So what we'll do is spin registry push ttl.sh. ttl.sh is cool because it's anonymous. The um, spin demo one hour. The image is pushed. And now we will do spin cube. So there is this cube plugin that you can install with spin. And then you can do a scaffold. And then you need to provide the hyphen f. And that's, it gives you a spin app. So let's actually put that in spin app.yaml. So this is the API version, spin app, a regular Kubernetes stuff. And you can also give, you know, different Kubernetes aspects, the regular, you know, resources, request limit, all the stuff that you can give with a YAML file. So now let's do kubectl apply hyphen F, spin app, kubectl get pods, container creating, running. So now we need to kind of test the application. What we can do is we can do a port forward of the application. So go to your Rancher desktop uh, application on the desktop and you can do the forward. Just click yes and then you can do local host. And here you go. Hello from Cube Simplify. So the app is working. We'll stop this. And that's the very simple developer workflow of creating the application, staying on the single screen and then scaffolding it using the similar tooling and then deploying. So you don't need much and you have all in one experience with your spin. Now let's take a step further. And there is this repo called AI examples, sentiment analysis. So AI examples, it has a lot of AI examples and we'll be deploying the sentiment analysis TypeScript one but we'll be deploying it using spin cube and we'll also be trying to use the GPUs in the whole process. So again, how you can do it with a single command is pretty simple. So I'll do spin build first. So it is building the sentiment analysis component. So it's done and just to make sure it's running, let's do spin up and it's doing with localhost 3000 Let's go and run it. And cube simplify is awesome. Analyze, taking a bit of time. And we can see the spike in the CPU load. 
because it's using local cores from my Mac and that's why it is taking some time. And you can see the statement is positive. So that's the sentiment of the statement. Although it took a lot of time. So what we can do is we will just try to use the same application but run it against a different GPU. How do we run that? So there in spin itself, there is a command called cloud GPU. So plug in to enable the local AI development using the cloud GPUs. So let's do that. So spin cloud GPU in it. So this is deploying the Fermion cloud GPU spin app and it should give us some something that we can use in order to use these GPUs for the app that we are running locally. And we are not changing anything in the application. So we'll be using the same application and provide different configuration. So that's the config that we have to provide, which is the runtime config flag. So we'll use it, runtime.config, and we'll paste this. And in order to get the URL from the dashboard, we'll go to Fermion Cloud, and that's the app URL. We just need the app URL. So it deploys onto your form Fermion Cloud account, you can just log in using your GitHub and that should be fine. So now, when we do a spin up, we'll provide, as mentioned, the runtime config file path and we'll give on runtime.config. In that, we have to specify HTTPS. And now, let's go back again and see how fast our application has become. We love planet Earth. And it's significantly faster, like very fast because it's actually using the fraction slice of GP. So that's how cool it is. But wait, 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 wait. We are not done here yet. What we want to do is actually deploy this application onto Kubernetes and run it over there and even use the cloud GPUs. How we can do this now? So the next step is to actually build the image artifact of it and push it to a registry. So what we'll do is spin registry push and push into the registry. And now, as I mentioned, you can, with the spin app, define a lot of constructs. So what we have mentioned over here is there is the CA certs, which I'll just create in a moment. This is this will be fixed in the future releases of spin so that the spin CA already gets created. I'll show you the command to create. The volume mounts, the runtime configuration that we provided over there, I have it over here, but I have to just change the value with the new token that we created. That's it. And before this, we'll just create certificate. So that's the command for getting the cert and creating the generic spin CA certificate. And make sure that this is the same secret name, spin CA. And we have created spin CA. That should work. So kubectl apply hyphen f spin app dot yaml. It's created kubectl get pods. Let's see if the sentiment analysis app is getting created. Yes, it is getting created and is in the container creating state onto the cluster. Now this particular cluster is which cluster? This is the rancher desktop cluster, which is there. Now, due to some reason in the Rancher desktop, you can see the sentiment analysis app is somehow going to crash loop back off. So it's not running over here. So what I have done is I have prepared another environment with uh, Killer Coda and I have installed use everything in the Kubernetes spin cube installing with Helm and done all the uh, installation steps that are present over here. So we have everything up and running. So let's clear the screen. Cube CTL get pods hyphen A and you can see everything is up and running. So now what we are going to do is since we have prepared the whole environment, we will be installing the same spin app that we have prepared over here in the uh, Killer Coda environment. So, so it's created Cube CTL get pods container creating and we can see the containers are running. So now let's port forward it and see the application in action. So kubectl get svc and then kubectl port forward address 0, 0.0.0.0 service and then the port is 80. So let's go here and click ports and click 3000 access and here we are. The app is running and let's say hello. It's a lovely day today. And positive, it's still using the GPUs. 
same application that has been deployed locally, running locally with remote GPUs, running on Kubernetes with remote GPUs. And you can do a lot with Spin Cube, as you can see. There are tutorials of, you know, how you can do event-driven auto-scaling, sharing, and all the other fancy HPA stuff. So that was it about Spin Cube. Uh, let me know in the comment section, what do you think about running WebAssembly workloads on Kubernetes? Yes, I have been advocating for running WebAssembly overall. That is why I created the course as well. Check out the course, get yourself familiarized with Kubernetes, with WebAssembly, and then start with Spin Cube. Or if you are in the cloud ready ecosystem and you just want to prepare and provision your nodes and make it WebAssembly ready, you can use Spin Cube. It's going to be a CNCF sandbox project. Soon the application is already in. That's how you can run your simple app or even a bit complex app. Yes, there are some gaps when you talk about like we, we saw in the Rancher desktop thing. Uh, I don't know, something something was off that it was not able to run the same image and app and the manifest that I showed, but it was able to run on Killer Coda. So there you go. You can actually create the simulate the environment on Killer Coda and try out Spin Cube and run uh, even the complex application. So um, yes, there are a lot of stuff that needs to be fixed and a lot of stuff that the spin, not not only the spin team, because since it's open source and it's being donated to the CNCF, so there's a lot of buzz and a lot of people are contributing and so can you. So contribute to this uh, kind of project and that would be interesting to see where things go from here and how easy they can make to run other WebAssembly applications and other installers, not only spin apps, and how they can make spin app spin applications to even run the apps from other artifacts that do not have a spin.toml file. So it would be very interesting to see all these ecosystem. And yes, there is works in progress uh, happening to make it happen. So I hope you like the video. And if you like the video, do not forget to drop a like, comment, and share it with your friends. Thank you so much. And also subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.